What's happening, YouTube? KG4FJC, Jason. Today, well, for this next series of videos, uh, we're starting something new. Uh, friend of our, a uh, friend of mine, here uh, on the uh, 220 system in Virginia, uh, he put together his own node. Had a heck of a time with it. I had a heck of a time of mine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from start to finish, building an all-star node the easy way. We're going to take a lot of the guesswork out of it. All right, just a lot of it. Um, a lot. Of, there's a lot of information out there. A lot of it's just over everybody's head when they're first starting. You don't have to be a computer genius. You don't have to really know Linux. Uh, there's really nothing mystical about it. There's several ways you can do it. You can buy a pre-built node. That's fine if you want to do that. I'm cheap and I like tinkering and I like building. So what we're going to do is we're going to discuss building a personal all-star node that's publicly accessible so that you can uh, use your HT, you can go around the neighborhood, you can go a few miles away, you can set it up at your house and depending on how extreme you want to get, you can get some pretty good range out of it or just around the block if you want to. Um, we'll be using a, a TYT as the example. Um, I prefer using a TYT because they're cheap. <clears throat> yeah, it's a Chinese radio, but so what? Um, uh, we'll talk about uh, adding the DB9 connector to the back of that. We're going to make a harness to go from your interface to that. And then uh, on and on. I'm not going to get into what power supply you need. Just know that you're going to be running a mobile rig uh, in the house. And you'll need, of course, an antenna and coax and place to put it. And you got to have good internet. Uh, that's also a must. Uh, having router access is a good thing to have. So um, anyway, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a uh, radio. TYT 9000. See if I can get it up there. Yeah, it's a little blurry. And my background image comes through the sticker. Um, this is a TYT 9000D. Uh, they're like 140 bucks. Um, 60 watt, 50 watt, supposedly. 40 watts on a good day. Um, this one is a 220 version because uh, I manage the uh, 220 network here in Virginia. Um, you can see the DB9 in the back right there. Um, that doesn't come factory. The hole is there and there's a, actually a header on the circuit board. You can add that with just a little bit of soldering to the connector. You don't have to do anything in the radio but plug the connector in, um, which makes it really nice. I wire these the same as an Alenco DR series, the 135, 235, 435. Um, specifically, we've got Alenco 235s and we can swap these in and out if one of these dies put an elenco in if the elenco has the scratchy receive like a lot of them do we'll swap it out whatever um so that's the first thing you're gonna need is a radio like i said about 140 bucks or so uh next thing you're gonna need is a raspberry pi uh this yeah this is a uh, pi 4. um you can use a pi 3 or a pi 4 um Pi 3s are great. They're a little more versatile. Pi 4s work fine. They run a little warmer. Uh, I don't have a fan inside this one, but I would highly recommend a fan if you're running a Pi 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but they work fine, uh, especially for a single node. There's no problem. You'll need USB cable. Uh, this is a Type A to Type B. You can't see it in the bag, but trust me, it's a Type A to Type B. Uh, the interface that I prefer using and have built out exclusively for our system uh, it comes with it so something to think about uh, others don't as far as I know I'm not sure I kind of stick with one of them and I'm gonna get into that right now the other hardware that you will need is one of these right here this is a man that is blurry isn't it? this is a URI as it's commonly called it's a USB radio interface you're Type B USB plugs in right here. And this end's got a DB9 on it that goes to your radio. Uh, again, we'll talk about making the cable that goes here. You can buy the cables. Um, I think they're around 60 bucks a piece. Personally, I like to make mine since it cost me like three dollars to make one. So I'm not going to spend 60 bucks on something I can make in 15 minutes. Uh, we'll get into that later. But this is made by uh, Masters Communications. Uh, you can get these as a kit. You can get them assembled and tested. You can get it with or without a uh, case. I've got a 3D printer. 
Um, unfortunately, I'm using the green screen and I printed my cases in lime green. So I could hold it up and show you, but it just turns into the background. So anyway, if you have a friend that has a 3D printer, it's a good thing to do. Um, you can print them out yourself or you can order it with it. Um, it's a couple dollars more for ordering it with the case. Um, but you will need a case regardless. But again, uh, Masters Communications, this is the RA35. Um, I have used these a lot, like exclusively. They're bulletproof. They're rock solid. Um, highly recommend that. That is the main components you will need to get your all-star node up and running. Um, I would recommend for your Pi, for initially setting up the Raspberry Pi, an HDMI monitor. And if you're getting a Pi 3, it's got a regular HDMI port. A Pi 4 has a micro HDMI. So you'll need the cable that goes from the, the HDMI cable that goes from the Pi to the monitor, whichever the case may be. And I highly recommend getting a uh, USB keyboard. Having the monitor and the keyboard makes setting up the Pi a no-brainer. It really makes it easy. If you have to do it through an Ethernet connection, you're kind of on your own because I don't do them that way. I just use a monitor and keyboard. Um, it just makes life so much easier. So the monitor, keyboard, the Raspberry Pi with the power supply, the URI uh, interface. Uh, like I said, Masters Communications makes the ones that I use. Um, DMK has some. Uh, the Rim Lite, I believe, is they're called. You can find them on, uh, I think, on Repeater Builder. Um, that's what uh, you're going to need for the computer-ish side of it. And again, you'll need a, a node radio, a TYT 9000 or an Alenco. The TYTs also come in 2 meter, 220, 440, uh, whatever your flavor. Again, we do 220 out here because we've got a 220 system. And we like 220 because it's, well, we like it. Um, but you can get it in 2 meter, 220, 440. And you can make, make it on whatever band you want. So if you only have a dual band HT, Get it for either 2 meter or 440. If you've got a 220, I would recommend building 220 because we're trying to promote activity. Um, but that's it for the basics of the hardware you need. I will put links in the description below. Uh, so thumbs up and uh, appreciate it. And uh, we will catch you next time. And this is the first video, so we're going to try to get some, some editing done. And uh, I'm not too used to YouTube, so if we can make it work better, hopefully we'll get better as we go along. So 7-3 for now, KG4FJC.